start. What's going on, everybody? This is Zach and Josh with Everything Automotive Podcast, brought to you by Imperium Racing. And today we're actually doing a review video, so a little different than our other podcasts. We're going to be talking about P-Gear, that bad boy right there on the table. Product um, placement. Yeah. A little suction cup working in action there. It's nice and sturdy. P-Gear is a racing meter? Yeah. I always, I always forget what like the actual terminology is for it. Performance meter, I guess. It's a meter that keeps track of your car's times and speeds and G-force and all kinds of stuff. Everything. Um, we'll just tell you guys about our experience with it. We've had a chance to use it at a couple track days now. And then we'll say a few little problems we ran into with it. And then we'll talk about some of the pros of using this versus compare it to some of the other stuff that you could you could use. So, what, Sonoma was the first, first time we... Uh, use this thing it was it was our test day p gear yeah so we went to sonoma raceway and jet uh the other gentleman on our channel yeah <laughs> um he was racing his miata that day and we couldn't go with him because sonoma doesn't allow passengers so it was just him in there and then the p gear and i guess that led to really our first issue with it was trying to set it up and get it recording and yeah correct yeah really we really only had two issues which was starting it and phone mounting it which the phone mount obviously has nothing to do with this but that was that was an issue we had that if you use it you'll probably run into all, as well you need a good sturdy phone mount that doesn't shake or vibrate but yeah because we got a we had a phone mount but it was figuring out where to mount it was a little bit of an issue because we hadn't done this ahead of time we decided to try and mount it like 10 minutes before jet needed to drive onto the track yeah probably not the best best thing and he was ready to get on and we had to hurry and yeah so if you if you just figure out your phone mount situation and take care of that like before your track day figure out how you're gonna do that that'd be good less less room for error there yeah because we we tried to use like some 3m tape on josh's phone screen to help hold it to the phone mount and then that led to like his phone screen being upside down and then we couldn't change it because it was 3M'd on there and Jet needed to leave. And then the phone mount was actually shaky. So we taped around the phone mount to try to get it less shaky, but it was still right. shaky. So you just need a good, solid, sturdy phone mount to mm -hmm. start if you want to use the P-Gear. Yeah, and maybe just test it out on the street, do some zero to 60s, drive legally within the speed limits, guys, just to see if your phone mount vibrates or anything. Just driving on the street would give you a good... Good, help you yeah, figure out how to use it assessment yeah um which yeah we obviously should have done before the track day but we decided to do all that like 10 minutes before Go all out. trying to use it we were ready but not really so yeah starting it was really our only issue that we had that was actually like with the p gear and again even that wasn't really a problem with the p gear it was just because we had it mounted far away from jet and you can't see the phone screen, and it was yeah. Josh's phone, and so like he couldn't start it. So the first three, or was it four races at Sonoma? Uh, three. The, the first, first three races, we couldn't get any, we couldn't well, get it started. We didn't try the first one, and then the second. The first one we tried, not video, we tried just the uh, GPS aspect of it. Oh, okay. Then the second and third, we couldn't get the video. The vid My phone kept shutting off, so that is a good thing to touch on. Make sure you have your phone not on low battery and your screen time always on so the app doesn't mm -hmm. close because it'll go it'll, your phone will go to sleep right because you're not touching the screen that's my understanding of it i'm not positive i wasn't in the car but the phone kept getting shut off and i have a feeling that's why yeah because and once i once i switched that it was good to go and at least one of those times jet had to wait a while which happened at thunder hill too so we used it at sonoma and thunder hill mm -hmm. And one of the times at Thunder Hill, I was in the car with them, and uh, we got stuck in the hot pits because there was an accident on the track, and we sat there for like 10 minutes and didn't move at all, so your phone like screen Probably went black, off. Yeah, which I, I don't know if maybe if you're driving, it keeps it awake, but it, it was just sitting there not doing anything. Once you pass the start line, then your phone's good to go, but you have yeah. to actually pass the start line 
for it to start. Otherwise, it will shut off. Right. So we were starting it, and then Jet was at Sonoma. We would start it, and then he'd drive and wait in the hot pits for five or ten minutes. So his, the phone would fall asleep before he even started driving. Exactly. Just start it either right as you're ready to start your lap or turn your phone on not no sleep mode. So Yeah. Keeps going. So, so yeah, again, those... Um, doesn't really two, have a lot to do with the app. It's yeah, those two issues error. we had was was just figuring out how to use it. So Correct. basically, but this will test, save you time yeah. and time is money. So money. So like we were saying, um, just try the try it out before you go to the track and don't do what we did where we're trying to figure it out five minutes before you have to drive on. And Preparation's then is key. Yeah, and as far as a starting issue, as long as if if it's your phone, if it's the driver's phone. If you get a mount where you can kind of like touch the screen, that'd probably be best because then you can start it right before you you drive off. Or if you have a second person in the car, if that's allowed at that track and they can start it, then you won't have any issues. Um, that way, if it's not working, you'll be able to see, maybe pull into the pits and start it if you really want to yeah. get it that race. But but we did have a, at least, what, one Sonoma session or two and then a couple at Thunder Hill where you started it in the car and then we drove onto the track and everything and yeah. waited in the hot pit for a few minutes and it was fine. Yeah. So it was, so maybe it just, it is just the settings on your phone to make sure it won't fall asleep. I think that's what it was. I, I would go with that. Yeah. So check your phone settings, test it out before you use it. Those big two issues weren't even really the meter. It was just us figuring out how to do it. Um, definitely get a good phone mount and figure out that situation before you go to the track. And then a uh, kilometer per hour was a really small thing. One of our videos was, Miles per hour and one was kilometers per hour. Correct. Yours um, was miles. Jets was kilometers. Yeah. Jet isn't that fast. He's good, <laughs> but he's not that fast. Not that fast. Um, but yeah, so we already got that figured out though, right? The kilometers yeah. per hour. It looks like the new update uh, is reverted to miles per hour. So. And I think you said you just resynced Jet's video and now it's correct anyway. Correct. Right? Yeah. So Jet's video was still in kilometers per hour, but then I just re uh, remerged the video and now it shows miles per hour. It shows all the correct lap data and all that mm -hmm. it's nice so that was just a really small thing and they already fixed it yeah. um they're quick and then yeah. the the good new developers. new interface looked pretty good too right yeah it was a lot more user friendly before it was just kind of a list of uh unorganized stuff but now it shows your profile your car all this other good stuff up here all in order um yeah shows online races active online races if you want to go to mexico and and race some people who are also in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, everyone's racing in Mexico these days. I haven't been able to use that function yet, but once more people get the P gear, maybe some people will be ready to race. Yeah, so buy it so we can buy it so race we can each race other you in our nice and slow cars. Yeah, that'd be fun to have like a like a race and then like a a prize. That's what I'm saying. I think that this this we product, could do that. We could set that up. We could get that going. This is the product. This is going to be the future. You're going to be racing people in new york from california mm -hmm. real time on your phone do prizes do all that good stuff that'd be fun and it's all verified by the 20 hertz gps on p gear yeah uh which is a great segue into all the upsides of p gear upsides <laughs> we spent like 20 minutes talking about the the two <laughs> the two bad things that aren't even really related to yeah. p gear itself just but, issues um, that you might come across that you don't don't want to come across yeah so hopefully we can help you save some time so you can just enjoy the track and get good footage while you're there um so a lot of the good stuff about this is like josh was just saying the refresh rate on it is extremely high from what i understand 20 hertz means 20 uh 20 refreshes per second your phone is generally one hertz one refresh per second um the comparable product draggy which doesn't do race tracks it only does zero to 60 that's mm -hmm. 10 hertz so it refreshes 10 times it's still pretty accurate but this is 20 hertz so that's twice as accurate the accuracy is cool because related to some other products because there's a few other ones that we'll talk about you can get lap times on um but that's all you get and sure it's maybe accurate it's semi-accurate to, to like yeah, yeah a second or two um but I mean, if you want a really accurate time, you're going to want accurate time. But the cool thing about this that I thought was cool is on the bottom half of uh, the recording, you can see like your fastest and slowest parts of the track, as well as uh, what, how many G's you're pulling. Exactly, I think it's yeah. uh, forward and sideways. Forward right? and sideways. Yeah. Or 
forward yeah. backward and sideways correct and it shows yeah your fastest pace on the the lap it shows in green the slowest shows in red uh i believe it's yellow for the medium and mm-hmm. so you could see where you're starting to slow down for the corners maybe try to slow down later assess via the video it yeah. also syncs the video and the track so you can watch both at once. I was in the beginner group at Thunder Hill, and so they gave us a printed out card of uh, oh, like yeah, the, the what line, what yeah. line to take around the track. Oh, yeah. So you yeah. you can look exactly. at your own line and where you're where it's fast and where it's slow, and you could probably make yourself faster by checking. Definitely, that. that's definitely something I didn't think of. You could yeah. track your line and then make your line sync up to what it yeah. should be. Because the color the colors show where it's slow and fast, um, and it's pretty cool just to see G's because you're like oh. That corner was a half a G. Oh, yeah. That makes sense why the Integra was like this. <laughs> you pulled over a G on one corner. I think. Oh, right. Yeah, you were like 1.1. 1. 1. Yeah. Jet it did, felt like uh, it. Jet did 1.8 on one of his. So, yeah. it's uh, All of those um, breakdowns, I think it also tells you your fastest time from each section of the track, right? Correct. So, it technically can tell you that like if you got a perfect yeah. lap, how fast you could be. Definitely. Yeah. It tells you your top speed, your G-force. It's everything yeah top speed is kind of cool because i don't really i'm not like paying attention to my speedometer and it's not digital so it's not like easy to read anyways so it's kind of cool to be like oh okay that's what i topped out at exactly and then yeah the section times because it's like this would be your perfect lap and then you're like all right well if i drive better you know try a little harder i can get there jet's fastest lap he his top speed was actually less than his other one of his other laps he hit 95 on his fastest lap and 99 on one of the others so yeah if he hit 99 on his fastest lap, then maybe his time would have went down by a few seconds. True. All the track stuff I was super impressed with. Um, and the battery life seemed impressive too. For instance, our camera that we're using, I have to have three batteries for because <laughs> when we're filming like this, uh, it's like 45 minutes to an hour at last. But yeah. you had this running all day at Sonoma. Day. At least eight hours. And it's uh, and you small. didn't even charge it while we were there. Yeah. So this is hooked up to the suction cup. It actually comes with a little suction mount cup that you could put on your window or whatever. Because it does need a good connection to the satellites. You can't just have it under your seat. Yeah, you can't bury it. Box. You kind of need it in the view of the satellite. So this suction cup's nice. Just screws on there. And... Uh, just suction it to your window yeah um but a nice presentation we're gonna we're gonna just sound like a full-on ad here people are like all right why you guys are selling this but honestly though because we got to try it out uh which was cool josh got us the hookup to to test this out we were saying the battery life on this is good speaking of which the camera just died and we had to replace the battery good battery life is essential Jet's been tracking his car for a while, and I've gone with him a, a handful of times. And he usually rents a transponder, and it's twenty bucks each day, each track day you go to rent it. So if you do a weekend, that's forty dollars, um, or you know every time you go, twenty bucks, right? So in one season, that would pay for one of these. And this if does you, so if you, much more than if you track your track. car a lot, exactly. Right, and you only have that transponder while you're at the track for that day. If you have this, you can do zero to sixties, sixty to zeros. You do race your friends. Race custom uh, race tracks yeah you custom set stuff. Your own stuff if you're going to work sometimes i don't know about you but i'm curious about if i got to work faster today than normal i, I race myself so make that your your race track and yeah. time yourself you know and the transponder um you do have to mount on the outside of your car somewhere if if it falls off for some reason which usually it's pretty easy to zip tie them on pretty tight but if you do mess that up and it falls off, uh, it's usually five hundred dollars to replace it. You have to pay them. And then also, Jets had problems with those, even mounting them on the outside of his car. Um, sometimes he does a couple sessions. They didn't post the times yet, and we're like, "What the heck?" And then we go check, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, here's the times." And he's like, "I'm not on there." And they're like, "Oh, guess you need to move it to a different spot in your car." That, didn't you say it took an entire day to get your time? Yeah, we didn't. Or Jet, rather? Uh, yeah, a couple times ago at Thunder Hill, he posted a few of them, but Jet's session didn't get posted. And that's why we didn't know the transponder wasn't working until the third session, because they weren't posting times. And we're, and he's like, oh, well, we'll find out later. Or they'll post them later. And this then finally, you- after two sessions of not having times, we went and asked him. And he's like, oh, I didn't put them up yet. Here they are. And yeah, then yeah. Jet's name wasn't on there. On top of that, you have to wait until the race is over, even best case scenario to get your track times. This will give you real time, real time lap oh, time. Oh, so if you have your phone in a good spot, you yeah, could actually it'll, see how you actually verbally tell you 255 on the lap time and shout it out to you. 
2 minute, 55 second, 59. So, you know, that's a good point. Oh, this lap was faster than the last one. And then I think that's a huge advantage of this. Huge. That's that's like what runners use to like track themselves, like the running apps and stuff will shout out your oh, time. Yeah, so you exactly. can see if you're doing well, doing better. pace yourself, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually pretty cool to know how you're doing, because my last session in the Integra, uh, we didn't have this up. We had it my fourth the session, fourth. I think. Right. And then my fifth session was a little bit faster and like it felt fast, but I didn't know yeah, if it was just because, that, yeah, we didn't know until afterwards. Another thing I liked about it is um, we've seen some other racing meters that w we found one specifically that didn't interface with your phone and it had a speed and everything on the screen like this one does, but it had to plug into your OBD2 port. And I didn't think about this until today, but... If we were using that, I wouldn't have been able to use it because my car is in 1995 and doesn't have an OBD port anywhere. Um, so I wouldn't be able to use that. But since this has really good GPS connection, that's what it uses to get your speed and it's accurate. You put it in anything. Yeah, so you no can put parts. it in any car. So if you're racing a car that's not early 90s, 80s, like whatever, if it doesn't have a port, you don't need that to get your speed and everything like that. It's, this is just standalone and does everything by itself. Exactly, or an actual race car, I'm sure. Yeah, you don't have OBD ports, you need this. Right, yeah. If you have any car that, yeah, you OBD t port is not there or you have something plugged into it because your car's crazy, whatever you're doing, um, it's nice that you can get speed and Gs and all that crazy stuff without having to plug it into your car at all. Exactly. There's Just, a lot of advantages here. There's a lot. Yeah. A lot going for it. Honestly, it, uh, we're, we're pretty happy with it. Like we said at the beginning of the video, we ran into a few issues, but it was mainly just mounting it and being able to start it. And especially with wait times, not having someone in the car and it was just your first time using it. Yeah, so like your phone settings were wrong. <clears throat> so if you figure out your phone settings and get a, a really good phone mount ahead of time, um, should be good to go and just test it out before you go to the track so that you don't waste time at the track and it's track days can be hectic. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah just, thing you want to worry about is, extra stuff you already have enough to worry about so yeah if you just know hit press start your mounts are all good then you're good to go since i didn't race sonoma thunder hill was my first time racing with the acura and all my meetings i literally had like 10 minutes between finishing meeting oh, and yeah. and having to leave for my next session while so. he was in his meetings i was setting the stand up and i yeah. found out the suction wasn't suctioning to his my dashboard, dashboard right? so i had to try different angles different positions finally got it on the window but um, just find a good place to mount your phone so it's recording the whole field of view and you'll be good. Yeah, definitely recommend messing with that beforehand so you can get like a good cool angle that you want of, definitely. you know, interior car and the track or the track and then make sure the mount actually sticks to whatever you're putting it on yeah. and make sure you can start your phone yourself. Like, We'll probably put a link to a good, uh, a good <clears throat> phone mount in, in the description. Yeah, because the one we used for Thunder Hill didn't work very well. Not Excuse me, Sonoma, Sonoma didn't work very well. Horrible, yeah. But the Thunder Hill one was, was good, great. so we'll yeah. probably throw a link for that. Um, and then we'll have a link for a P Gear as well if you wanna if you wanna purchase that because we're super happy with it. And if you do enough track days, it's one hundred percent worth it. Um, Even if you don't do track days and you just want to know your zero to sixty time, it also does exactly. sixty to zero. You can test your new brake pads, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and the zero to sixty, I didn't, I didn't mention earlier. I liked that it actually uh, broke it down, so it has like your zero to ten, your ten to twenty, blah blah blah, which I thought was really cool because my my Acura is super slow, but my zero to ten was really good. So I'm like, all right, at least not the launch. At least my launch was okay. I, I just drive a launch. slow car. Correct. And the, the 0 to 40 was like 5.2 seconds, and the 40 to 60 was like 5.5 seconds. Yeah. So I thought that was really funny. Like, it was cool to look at. Because I'm like, damn. There. Yeah. It's like, first gear is fine, but after that, it's really slow. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Not so. Long. Yeah. Follow along for the Integra build because that thing's going to get crazy real quick. Um, all right. We're probably running really long on this video, so we'll, we'll close it up. But, um,. Yeah, we really enjoyed testing this out. Shout out to P Gear for giving us one to to work with, and they've already uh, taken some of Josh's feedback and they've been updating it. They're they're gonna constantly work on it, and make it better, and they already have just since we've had it in the last few months, been using it. Definitely, yeah. I think this is the future between, like we were saying, zero to sixty, sixty to zero, lap times, custom lap times, 
and online racing that's yeah literally everything you could imagine in a performance meter yeah and the interfaces was really well once we figured it out interface was good and they updated it so it's better now this thing it looks great now it, this thing seems pretty solid your own profile with your car picture it looks like it's going to be its own social media so if you get in now and early you could be one of the pioneers of future car social media yeah yeah so and it's yeah. once we got it figured out it was so much less hassle free than the renting the transponder and on all that stuff oh yeah because there's issues with that too and then you can do testing outside of the track and get all your numbers row. yeah <laughs> so overall um that's the issues we ran into phone mount um and starting it which were easy to fix and we figured out um we'll <clears throat> post a link to the phone mount so you guys can use that one or if you find a better one let us know and if you buy one and use it let us know what you think or if you're using another transponder that you like let us know because this yeah. is the best one we've tried so far out of i think we've used tested three different ways to time <clears throat> and this one's really good yeah it was i guess we forgot to mention this it's accurate up to 99.99 percent is the number that i came up with because it was off by a few hundredths of a second not even tenths of a second hundredths of a second in a few minute long lap so right 99.99 percent accuracy rate there and we're comparing it to the other uh the transponder and the other one we we're using so those ones could have been wrong this one could have been right yeah maybe this one is correct and the transponder is wrong so yeah either way it's such a small difference that it, it doesn't matter and then you get all the other info with this so it's pretty exactly. cool it's been fun to it's been fun to use and see how slow my car is and uh see how many g's i'm i'm pulling when <clears throat> when it's you know swaying like a and ship on the high seas going around corners so yeah it's been fun to use it's cool well comment below and keep giving us views so maybe our cars in the future won't be so slow and this will be a little bit more fun to use yeah <laughs> exactly all right let us know what you think and uh follow subscribe if you want hope you enjoy the video peace